Okay. Welcome back, Garin. Full glad am I to see you safely returned. Tell me, how fared you on your sojourn to the Twelveswood? I beat the shit out of a giant scary lady. Two of Lahabrea's minions, and they sought to measure your strength by their own admission. Hold on a sec, I gotta, like, you need to... Trying to keep the pops to a minimum. Okay, there we go. Alright, don't mind me. Been a hot minute. The devils taunt us. It is beyond doubt, then. The Assians have begun to move in earnest. Would that we knew what to what end. Good lord, the wood that I... That makes my brain melt. And it will not bemoan our plight. Thanks to your tireless efforts, we are at least aware of the encroaching darkness. Alas, I can only do so much. It is clear to me now that we scions are too few to protect the realm against a threat unaided. We must needs alert the three nations to the presence of this elusive enemy and recommend that they heighten their vigil. Nod. There is no shortage of, there is no shortage of misery in, boy, my sweet Jesus. There is no shortage of misery in the world that the Asians might exploit. We have an arduous struggle ahead of us. Yet come what may, we must not allow ourselves to become lost to hope. That is precisely what the enemy desires. I mean, I'm pretty sure they desire us to die. I don't care if they think we're hopeful or not. We have gleaned all that we can from the information available to us. Let us set this investigation aside for the present. Another matter has arisen that arises, excuse me, that requires your attention. Let me know when you are ready to be briefed and I will summon the others. I got a cache of shit, yo, and it's amazing. Actually, I don't know what it is. I think this is like... Wobbuffet! Hold up. Uh, inventory. Sort. How many of these do I have? That's only level 28. I'm, like, level 30. It actually is seriously hard to read. It is level 36. Alright. Oh god, okay. So, this I do remember because this is the worst quest chain in the game. Well, perhaps the second worst quest chain in the game. The, uh, Realm Reborn. Requests our assistance. Oh, it's actually got voice acting this time around. Okay, I don't have to make fun of her now. Concerning the kobolds they sent such copious notes on, I presume? Yes. And, no. It has more to do with their findings, which portend a peril far greater than any beast tribe. Okay. Yeah. You know, so a Saturday. What sort of peril? The worst kind. A tribe of kobolds in the vicinity of Limsa Lominsa has reawakened Titan. Oh, fuck. Our task will be to slay the primal. The maelstrom have sworn support for the endeavor. I swear to God, I just want my hair to be off my ears. They just not no itching them constantly. The havoc kobolds can wreak. Yeah, I'm sure. Years before the Grand Company's reformation, two primals, Leviathan and Titan, chanced to converge upon the sea wall, wreaking untold devastation. Really now? now? By the grace of the navigator, were the mercenaries Melvib hired able to fend them off. Ah. Was that a 1.0 thing or was that prior to 1.0? Yet it did not take long for the beast tribes to regroup, and they summoned their primals once more. Thankfully, their second coming was decidedly short-lived, but that is beside the point. So I'm guessing that is 1.0. So long as tormented souls will them to exist, the realm will never be rid of primals. The Maelstrom has kept a watchful eye upon the beast tribes. And the kobolds in particular, ever since. Which I imagine they would. To the matter at hand. Unlike Ifrit, we know scarcely anything of Titan. Unfortunately, the only force known to have bested him, the modestly named Company of Heroes, disbanded five years since, and mercenaries are not in the habit of keeping chronicles. Expect. The worst. 
Sounds nice and wholesome. The Maelstrom's help is of course appreciated, but even if we had their whole armada at our disposal, we could still find ourselves overmatched. A pity the kobolds lack the gentle sensibilities of the sylphs. A peaceful resolution would be more than welcome. I mean, chances are I'm pretty sure we pissed the kobolds off doing something though, right? The echo will not avail you this time, I fear. If you are to survive, your steel must needs speak for you. No one okay. would think you a coward were you to decline. Can I decline? Fuck. <laughs> so you will accept? Yeah, I'll accept. Nod. Thank you. You're welcome. You can't very well send him to Limsolo Minsa without your stola. Can we, Minfilia? May I ask that of you, Yashtola? I never thought it in question. Ever reliable. It's the cat ears. Very well. We will spare no effort to win victory. You may count on the full support of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. We are the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Like, what are you talking about the full support of... Okay. And all not a field will aid the fight from afar. Not all of you. Oh, okay. Not everybody out doing stuff is gonna do stuff. Got it. Ingrid, Ida, go to the grand companies. Tell them of our plight and solicit their support. Don't mind me. I'm not scratching my boob, strictly speaking. There's just like. You ever have something where it's like. It's not that something has necessarily fallen down your shirt, but there's like some sort of. Like thread or something that's like. It feels like something is definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not where it should be. The whole camera thing is probably making me look a lot weirder than I am. Which is just saying something, because I know I'm not normal to begin with. What were we talking about? Ariange, send word to the students of Baldessian and Alfino, if you would. His name is pronounced Alfinu? Alfina? So wait, are the D's silent also in French? Languages are dumb. Papalimo, compile all the information we have on Titan, little though it may be. Wait a minute, I just noticed that like every single one of these motherfuckers has a tattoo on their neck. You notice that? Papalimo, Ida, well, you're Yanje, uh, Mr. Lingerie Man. Um, he has his tattoo like on the side of his face. But like everybody here has a tattoo of some kind. Is that, is that a thing? Is that ever explained? I mean, don't answer that if it is, because I want to find out on my own, but... Because at this point, I'm basically treating everything as a spoiler, because everything in this game seems to have a fucking meaning somehow. Like, 18 years down the line, it's like, SURPRISE, BITCH! You know that one dude had a hand tattoo? That's because he was Satan in disguise! I love Lalafell, they're so cute. You will be apprised of the tactical situation when you reach the Sailor's Ward. Yup. Provision yourself for the journey. May you walk in the light of the crystal. Yes, yes. Crystal lights are the most awesome thing. They have little, they make little rainbow effects and it's kind of like a, you know, nature's disco ball. That's how I'm putting it. It's nature's disco ball. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, hold up. Oh, actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. I got a level 35 quest, though. Oh, wait. Where do I go? Wait, shit, no, it's not in Gridania. It's in... Gurthus. I don't have it yet. Fuck. Okay. Lance of Fury... Yeah, it's in Curthus. So that means I gotta go to... Uh, where the f fuck? Camp Dragonhead. What the hell is this? Foundation? Oh, that's Ishgard! So that's Heavensward stuff. Okay. So this is... The Black Shroud. So I gotta go to Fallguard Float. Yes. God help me, I may actually get used to playing this windowed at 1440p. Which is very strange, because I don't think I've gotten used to anything 
really anything being windowed unless it's such a small resolution that playing it at full screen means I see about 18 pixels in the entire across the entire screen. So, like, if I'm trying to play a GBA game, which this sounds like an oddly specific statement because it is an oddly specific statement, you know, so if I'm trying to play, you know, a GBA game on, um, on emulator or something, you know, I'm trying to, I suppose it defaults to full screen and all of a sudden, you know, half my screen is taken up with somebody's eyeball and I'm just like, well, this seems like this might be a little bit of a, uh, this seems like this may take me out of it a little bit, so that one I have to play windowed because it just, it just doesn't look good otherwise, unfortunately. Also, my boy's a pimp. Look at this. He's in the freezing ass cold in the middle of the night and he's like, yeah, and what? I love this cat man. He makes me so very happy. And I just want to play so much of this game. <laughs> like literally I work all this thing and I was like, man, I could be playing Final Fantasy right now. I could be playing Final Fantasy right now. I could be playing Final Fantasy right now. It's been a long time since I'm like, man, I want to play this game. You know? There's a part of me that still really wishes that I could be that into WoW, but quite frankly, even if everything in WoW was happy sunshine rainbows and everything was wonderful, like... I mean, honest, it's in all sincerity, like, at this point, I kind of did everything I wanted to do. I've, I've gotten a max level of every character. Maybe they're not max level anymore, but I had a max level of every character. I've done uh, the Lore Master achievement twice. I've done the Insane achievement. I got 300 mounts. I got... 93 exalted reputations like you know i was like this close to getting justicar because fuck war song gulch uh basically like i've done everything i kind of wanted to do and at this point it's just sort of like i'm i'm there just to kind of chill out i i like the game i love the game but there's just nothing left there's nothing left there for me basically you know there are no new things i want to you know there are no new goalposts that i'm interested in jumping so as of right now, now that I'm actually starting to feel better and I'm starting to feel like a human being again and I'm not so utterly exhausted that I just can't think straight, I'm like, hey, maybe I should try doing something that's fun rather than something that's actually mindless. Hey, Albrecht, what you got for me? It is a pleasure seeing how readily the dragon stirs within you. You show great potential, Garin, a potential that may well prove the difference between victory and defeat. Astinian is no ordinary dragoon. Even when set against the legendary Azures of ages past, the man is considered second to none. Such is his prowess, in fact, that the day he was chosen by the Eye, it was proclaimed that Haldrath the Dragon Eye had been reborn. I mean, not to disparage your skills, Garin, but to pursue Astinian in your state in your current state would be tantamount to suicide. As promised, I, I shall train you in the way of the dragoon, that you might face Astinian as an equal. Before we commence, however, it is only fitting that you are edified regarding our origins. I'm not yawning because of a history lesson. I'm yawning because it's 12.30 in the, in the evening. <sighs> it all began a millennium past when our forebears resided in the southern plains of, in humble circumstances. The Fury, impressed by the spirit of our ancestors, decided it was, it was meet that she take them her own. Or she make them her own. She did, so did she appear before Haldra's sire, a man of courage and integrity named Thorden and bade him lead her people to the Promised Land, to what will become the great nation of Ishgard. Their journey brought them a wide chasm whereupon Thorda and his people set upon a bridge, to set to building a bridge. It was then that a dark shadow descended upon them, the great worm Nidhogg. Needless, heedless of his own safety, Thorda fearlessly charged at the colossal beast. Alas, he was pushed into the chasm by one of his own, a man seduced by the worm and fell to his death. <laughs> that sounds like a joke. He's like, yeah, he's gonna be hero and run, and somebody just like, and just yoinked him off a cliff. That's 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 a that's that's some prime mean territory right there. It shouldn't be, but it totally is. Taking up his slain sire's last, Haldreth hurled himself at Nidhogg, even as tears streamed down his face. The confrontation ended when the young man, his hand guided by Halone, landed a mighty thrust that prized out Nidhogg's eye. With a terrible roar of pain, the great worm took wing and fled while jubilation reigned below ishgard's priceless relic is none other than the eye taken from nidhogg that day it is a veritable wellspring of dragon uh, dragon power even even so removed from its owner it can exert control over the hearts of men Haldreth himself felt its malign influence but his love of justice brooked no corruption and he prevailed over the power claiming it for his own and so it was that the first azor dragoon was born being derived of our foe the power of the dragon is still a thing to be loathed but as Haldreth 
prove to us all, as long as our hearts burn with justice, we need not fear being taken in its thrall. So, demon hunters, basically. Uh, but what is justice precisely? Justice assumes that many... Sh justice assumes many shapes and forms, Garn, and none can say that one is greater than another. So long as you hold fast to your beliefs and stay true to yourself, you leave no room for the power of the dragon to master you. But enough of history. Let us return our attention to the present. A knight by the name of Sir Brucemont will see the next stage of your training. Seek him out at Witch Drop. There's a place called fucking Witch Drop? Y'all are way too hardcore for me, man. Like, this is some freaking, like, Holy Roman Empire. I'm just gonna destroy your day because, you know, heretics and shit. And for some reason, this actually super makes me want to play Final Fantasy Tactics. Because say what you will, I mean, it's been literally like 20 years, but Final Fantasy Tactics, I think, has probably one of, if not the best Final Fantasy story out there. Granted, I haven't played all of them, so I don't know I'm full of shit. But I actually really appreciated the fact that they, I mean, they, they straight up wholesale stole from, um, uh, uh, War, the Wars of the Roses, basically. They basically lifted European history wholesale and was like, surprise, bitch, here's a video game out of it. But also, European history is kind of interesting for just how ridiculously fucked up it is, man. European history, there's just so much just backstabbing and just constant drama. It's awful. I would never, ever want to go back in time. I mean, for any reason, but especially to, you know, medieval Europe, because they some crazy motherfuckers. I'm just saying. They are cray cray. Okay. So here's Dragonhead. Which, by the way, is an awesome city. I love, love, love the way Ishgard looks. Or Kurthus, or whatever this is. To be fair, I remember visiting this place once briefly playing 1.0. I never got past like level 32 or 33 or something. Because if y'all want to bitch about classic ball grind, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy 14 1.0 was was kind of a fucking grind. It, you had you had to you had to fight some shit to get that to work. Um, like you had to really, really own some shit to get that to work. Like you you had to. It was a time investment, and it's not even necessary that it, it took a long time to do, even though it kind of did, really, sort of, but not really. It's that you actually had to stop because there was a point. They got rid of it eventually, but there was a point where I think they called it, like, experience fatigue. So you could literally only get so much experience on a particular job. Like, you had a physical level, and then you had a job level. So your physical level would go up regardless of what job you played. And your physical level at level 50, like, it really didn't mean anything. It just kind of, like, gave you base stats and shit. But you would equip another weapon, and you would have a job level. And your job level, the... I was thinking of something like the amount of experience you got on your job level was also relative to your actual physical level. So if you had a physical job of 50 and a job level of 1 and you're fighting things at a level 1, it's somehow, I think it's like it penalized you or something like that. It did, it was a weird, it was a weird, weird system. I mean, I think they eventually got rid of it before changing all of this. Like before 2.0 happened, they got rid of that and just made it like 1.0. You know, they got, I think they just got rid of physical experience entirely, but it was just, it was a weird system, man. There is a reason 1.0 failed, and it wasn't specifically that it didn't have enough time to, to assert its vision. It's because it did some weird backwards shit that, like, may have sound cool on paper, but it just did not work. So, wow, kind of like the way wow is right now, where they may have, ow, motherfucker, you hurt. But, uh, oh, don't, no, don't nuke me. Don't nuke me, bro. I'm gonna do this real quick, because you kind of hurt, actually. Oh, you're level 38, and I'm level 36. So, things are being explained now. I really wanted to use that, but okay. Hmm. Sorry, I was trying to... Like, swallow my own spit, basically, and my tongue was like, So, you're talking about throwing up? And I'm like, no, no, no. I, no, I don't want to do that on stream at all. Or ever, but especially on stream. But basically, the way WoW is doing things right now, where it's like, they have their vision in their head, they have this idea of things they want to do, and they're good on paper, but they don't work, because the people playing the game are, like, humans, and, and not actually robots. 
Like, you may have a really cool vision, but if players don't play that way, then your vision doesn't work. Like, it has to work with how players play the games. It has to work with how humans actually interact with a fucking game. It's, you can't just be like, oh, but this, but if you do A and then B and then, like, triple Q, you know, to an exponent of the sixth degree or whatever, then, yeah, it should work. And I'm like, yeah, it should, but, like, no, we're, we're human beings, so we're going to take the, the path of least resistance. So if the path of least resistance is actual hot garbage, we're going to do it because it's the, the you know, I mean, I'd say the optimal way of doing things, but it's also it's the optimal way of doing things. There's a point where it's like you have to take, unless the way of, you know, the way you're supposed to do it is slightly slower, but way more fun says the person who was playing Classic WoW while watching everybody just dungeon grind to 60 and just completely ignore the open world, but that's neither here nor there. But basically, Final Fantasy 14 1. Whoops. Final Fantasy 1.0 had, had, had some fucking problems, okay? It had some real bad issues. Uh, so, I would think that if they'd had an extra year and a half to get the game out, it would have been in a much better state playability-wise. You know, it would have been a lot more stable. It would have had, like, you know, mailboxes and airships and chocobos and literally anything other than the main storyline because that's all that was in there um it would have been in a much more playable state but i still don't know if it actually would have been a good game because it had a lot of really really weird weird decisions that just are counterintuitive not just to like mmos but counterintuitive to just a good gaming experience you know when you have to fight the game to play it you're not making a good game, is basically what I'm saying. So the adventurer seeks to become a dragoon. Ha! Huh. Sir Albrecht speaks of legends and chosen ones, but I would see you prove yourself in a more practical fashion with your lance. Defend yourself! Hello? What am I defending myself against? Is that you? Oh, you're, you're coming over? Hey, buddy! Ba -ba -ba -ba. Dude, I just... Drop to level 38. Like, yeah, I'm not worried about you, my man. Although, again, I admit it is a little bit distracting to play this on a, uh... As a level 30... Uh, as a, excuse me, I can't words. Uh, it is a little bit distracting to play this when I'm, uh... Playing it on window mode. It's making my brain hurt just a little bit. Also, god damn you hurt, fool! Can you not be an asshole? You're not being pleasant, my dude. Just straight up unpleasant, man. Thank you. Alright, and what, bitch? You have some skill, I will give you that. And the glow of your soul crystal. Perhaps Sir Albrecht is not wrong about you, after all. Now return to him. Your training is complete. And then he just walks off into the sunset. Okay, that's fine. I got a giant run kitty. It's cool. Yoop. So I just learned recently that apparently you can buy mounts with achievement points. Which is pretty cool. But I, honestly, I think a lot of those mounts I already have just from collector's edition stuff, I think. I know these are collector's edition mounts. I don't know. I am confused. Oh, that's right. You're down here. Okay, that's fine. I wonder, was the chocobo faster? Than me just riding down there myself. Did they have like that 20% that speed boost? I almost said speed beast, but that's fine. The ambience is so fucking good in this game, though. I love it. And I cannot say that enough just how much I love. Love. Wait. Is it the observatorium? I hope so, because that's where I'm going. I think this might be faster. I don't really know. I can't really tell, but dude. Dude, look at this. Look at how amazing this is. I absolutely adore shit like this. I adore zones like this. You know, I always have very fond memories of the few times I saw the snow when I was a kid. Because it didn't snow very much where I lived. You know, maybe like... Excuse me. Tongue's doing the weird things again. You know, maybe once or twice a year of it's snow. But I always remember the handful of times where I would see the snow in the night. And because I lived in a wooded area, the trees would look like this. You know, I remember going out and even though the, the sky was absolutely pitch black. 
He has a streamer light for a uh, for a moon. Cool. But uh I just got distracted by streamer lights. But um uh where's the UI? There's the UI. You know, but even though it would be pitch black out, the you know, the light from the snow and everything would brighten everything up. So even though it was dark out, everything was very, you know, even though it was nighttime and there was, you know, no moon out to be seen, it was still so bright out. And I always have fond memories of that. And this just brings back those memories and I love it. I'm not saying I would live in the winter, like live in the snow for, you know, seven or eight months straight because, you know, this shit gets old real quick. When you start having to shovel, you know, for four or five hours straight because either you shovel for four or five hours straight or you have to shovel like five feet of snow out of your driveway and this is just like a Tuesday? That's just how things are? No, nah, you, can, you, you can keep it. You can keep it. It's pretty. I don't want to deal with it that, meant that much, you know. The soul of the dragon grows ever stronger within you, Garin. Clearly, your trial was a rousing success. I need only observe your crystal to know as much. Yes, though you have only just begun to walk the path of the Dragoon, it is clear you possess the talent to become a Stinian's equal. Go forth and make the powers you have obtained your own. Whether the time is right, we shall proceed- or excuse me, when the time is right, we shall proceed with your training. I get a new ability and it's awesome! Elusive Jump! I love allergies! Oh, this is a dub 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 do. I know that I know words. Hello? There you go. Alrighty, baller. So now I need to go to somewhere. Sorry if I keep shifting in my seat for whatever reason. I mean, maybe not for whatever reason. I know the reason. I was on my feet for eight and a half hours. But seriously, my nose is actually killing me. Like, it's it's actually driving me nuts. Um, my nose was on my feet for eight and a half hours, so my feet kind of hurt a little bit. And the reason I say for some reason is that this is not something that typically happens. I don't typically have, you know, foot pain or swollen feet or whatever. This is not something that, you know, I'm used to really dealing with. So it needs to, like, fucking stop because I'm trying to relax here and it's being kind of a dick. My feet are being dicks. Probably should have thought about that sentence through a little bit more, but it's fine. Okay, so upper decks. Where are we going? Ah. Uh, Aft Castle. Also. Limsa Lamensa is a poppin' freaking city, though. Look at this shit. And again, once again, I, I remind you. I am playing this on maximum settings at 1440p. At 4K, it gets right fucking pissed. But at 1440p, I am playing this shit on absolute max settings and this stuff looks beefy. I mean, see, this is without reshade, this is with it. You know, without it, I mean, it still looks, I mean, it's still a gorgeous looking game in a gorgeous looking city. But reshade adds just a little bit of extra pop. Just a little bit of extra color correction and a little bit. It makes it just a, a hint more vibrant, which gives it... A little bit of that flair, but again, Limsa Lamensa is a. I'm guessing Limsa Lamensa is like the hangout city. Is Limsa Lamensa like the Iron Forge of Final Fantasy XIV? Is that how this works? Is this like the Orgrimmar sort of deal? And only when I'm around this many people do you start to see a little bit of a hang every so often. Okay, so Aft Castle. Alrighty, off to do some Titan goodness. All right, let's see what we got. Good to see you, Private Worldbreaker. Scion sent word that you were on your way. The business, then, it was that we told the, an the antecedent. The kobolds have once again summoned Titan. A little over a moon ago, we began to observe the beastmen moving south in increasing numbers from Ogormo. Our scouts subsequently confirmed the object of their aggression. Crystals. Fodder for their fell primal. Oh, look. The hottest woman in the game, I'm just saying. 
You know, the, you know the, the meme that's sort of like step on me, tall lady, that everyone attributes to like Lady Dumitrice and Resident Evil? Step on me, tall lady. She is a tall lady. Please step on me. Thank you, High Commander. You may leave the rest to me. Your deeds bring glory to the Maelstrom, Private Worldbreaker. Right proud I am to call you one of our own. I kind of want to see what this sounds like when you're not a Maelstrom person. Forgive the lack of full warning, High Commander. The Admiral wished to address Garlin personally. We are no strangers to conflict. Long have the Sahagin and the Kobolds plagued our people. Nor is this the first time we've had to address a primal threat. In the past, when Titan rose to threaten the peace, it was up to the company of heroes we turned. But they are long disbanded, and we must look to other brave souls blessed with the strength to face this foe. So it is that we have turned out to the signs of the Seventh Dawn, confident in the belief that you are Limsa's best hope. I pray that you are right, yet the situation is far from simple. The kobolds are not prone to unprovoked aggression. Did not the Thalacracy make a pact with the beastmen that each would keep to their own lands and that no blood would be shed? And was it not the Lemincins who violated this agreement, dissatisfied with the lot? Shall we then condemn the beastmen for defending their homes? Even a pirate must one day reap what she has sown. Damn. I would advise you to choose your words with greater care, Lady Yustola. Stand down, High Commander. She has the right of it. And the wrong is mine. Really, do I claim it. Yet it makes little difference. Remorse will not shield us from Titan's wrath. Or would you have us fall upon our swords? My apologies, Admiral. The safety and security of Limsa Lamenta's citizenry are, of course, of paramount concern. The base is like, yeah, I fucked up, I know, but guess what? We got shit to figure out now. Already, we have observed disruptions in the flow of Aether further inland. The effects will be felt here in the city ere long. I ask much of you, I know, but the need is great. I trust I can count of you, Private? Nod. You have my thanks, along with the full support of the Maelstrom. I await good tidings. I want- I want her coat! Okay. She doesn't necessarily- she doesn't necessarily need to step on me, but can I, like... Can somebody make that coat for me? I want that coat. Well, maybe not the one with the boob plating, but just maybe something that covers the boobs, because I don't really have- I don't have what she has going on. I don't have the melon bazongas. The bazonga melons. So I would probably be kind of embarrassed if I did like, but you know, if something didn't have the boob plate right there, I want the coat, I'm just saying. That the kobolds should summon Titan demonstrates that they are no longer amenable to negotiation. This being the case, we must needs prepare for conflict. Before we meet Titan in the field, however, I would be wise to learn, excuse me, it would be wise to learn all we can of our foe. And I think, and I can think of no better source of information than the mercenaries who defeated him once before. The company of Mihiros may be no more, but several of its former members still live. It is said that one of them is employed at the Grey Fleet Mills in Lower, no Lower Lenosha. Quite why a mercenary should choose to become a miller, I do not know. When you find him, mayhap you could ask him for me. I, meanwhile, shall seek his fellows. So yeah, I can already tell you why. <laughs> yeah, I can already tell you why he's, he's working there. Um, a pup no longer. Ah, Private Worldbreaker, just the man I was hoping to see. Your exploits of late have been talk of Limsa. Don't let this puff your sails up too much, but I've heard of some of the higher-ups saying that Maelstrom would be lost at sea without you. But I suspect you're not the type to rest on your laws. Nay, the tempest raging in your eyes tell me you're here for new waters to navigate. Fortunately, we have just a place for people like you. Have you perchance heard of the Wolves' Den? A proving ground of sorts. Established by the Eorzean Alliance, a place where the most promising of Grand Company recruits are sent to hone their skills. The Wolves' Den is to be found just off the shores of Lenosha. The ferry at the Morabi docks in Lower Lenosha will grant you passage there. Upon your arrival, seek out Storm Captain Bakoya Lo Lotuslin. Lotuslin. Lotolzin. 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 Sure, whatever. I've let him know that you'll be coming so you can count on a warm welcome. Sure. Getting all the quests. I love this game. It's so beautiful, and it makes me so happy. I realize I'm saying that while probably having a super dead expression on my face, but a, that's a thing that my face just normally does, so... You know, there's that. Wait, how do we get to the fucking wolf's den? This is how we get to the wolf's den, right? How the fuck do I get to the wolf's den? Oh, 
Oh. Pass it to the wolves, Dan. From Solomon's Opera Ducks. Hold up. I legitimately don't remember how I'm supposed to get to the wolf's den. Oh, it's the fucking Marabi dry docks. Uh, can I get the Marabi dry docks from here? No. So I can't get the Marabi dry docks. So straight up, I just can't get over here. Unless I run, huh? Well, that is unfortunate. Okay, so off to Lower Lenosha I go, I guess. Alright. Well, we're gonna be in for a little bit of a run. That's fine. Uh, Tempest Gate to Lower Lenosha. That's fine. I see you up there shaking that ass. Oh, this is the, um, this is the baby area. Like the, um, their starter zone. Okay. That makes sense. My god, look at that. That is an immediate print screen. Jesus Christ, look at that. I don't know if that's a sunrise or a sunset. No, that's a sunrise. It's 4.19 a.m. in the game. Look at that shit, though. Good God. You know, I really do genuinely wish, and this is going to sound stupid, I genuinely wish that WoW had a day-night cycle similar to this, where it would cycle between day and night every few days, you know, every few hours or something like that, instead of it being day for 12 hours and night, like, following a real-life day and night cycle, which is cool and all, but I would love if it had something like this where it was day and night more, so you could actually... Because I think it's honestly more immersive to be able to watch a sunrise in the game. Versus, you know, popping in and seeing a... I mean, you can see a sunrise and wow. But it's going to take you like 35 minutes. Whereas this one, you can kind of just stand here and watch everything change over the course of about five minutes. So it allow you to... Allow you? Allows you to get more immersed into what it is that you're seeing. You know what I mean? Give me a chocobo keep. Even though I'm never gonna use it. Now to get... Yoop. 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 Oh, shush you. You're, fi you're fine. Okay, so let's get this real quick. Like, you can't tell me that's not amazing looking. Hold up a sec. Not what I wanted to do. We're gonna stand here and we're just gonna watch the fucking sunrise. How about that? Anybody watching this on a VOD later, feel free to just skip ahead, but we are gonna stand here and we are gonna watch a motherfucking sunrise and we're gonna take pictures. Because god damn it, this is gorgeous. Look at that. I mean, look at the detail on the freaking clouds. I mean, I know it's basically just a texture, but like, you gotta give them props. Like, those are realistic as fuck looking clouds right there. You know, you got your cirrus ones at the top, and you got your cumulonimbus kind of off in the distance because, of course, they're storm clouds. And you got the cumulus ones kind of puffing about. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You got the nimbus clouds puffing about. Well, no, I guess, no, wait. I guess those are technically cumulus clouds in the distance, aren't they? The ones that have the dark shadows? Because cumulus clouds are the ones that are closest to um, the, the Earth's surface. And they tend to be long and flat. And that's the ones that have the flat bottoms to it. You know, and they tend to be very sort of long and flat and maybe not have a whole lot of texture to them or what have you. The nimbus clouds are the ones that are a little bit higher 
up in the uh, atmosphere and they're the ones that kind of look like cotton balls they're the really big puffy ones you know what i mean like the one that's we can't see my mouse but the one that's like dead center right here that's kind of a nimbus cloud because it's big and puffy and the cirrus clouds are the one that are way way up in the stratosphere that are the very light wispy clouds because they're way up in the stratosphere um and then there's the cumulonimbus cloud which are storm clouds because they are big and puffy like the nimbus clouds but they have the long flat butt of a cumulus cloud so i.e cumulonimbus which is what you know the idea of it being big and puffy is because that's the storing of all of the water whereas the cumulus cloud because it's laying so low into the earth's surface that nimbus clouds really usually aren't supposed to be quite that low into the the earth's atmosphere so it's storing up all of that water to like wring it out like a sponge sort of deal but check this look at this we are standing here watching a fucking sunrise look at that look at how amazing this is also props to the fact that you can actually see the difference in the sunrise you see that but you see the uh the fading sun or the uh the fading away of you know, the night sky over this way. So you can tell that... Let me think. It sets in the west and it rises in the east. So you can tell I'm facing the east right here and you can see the sun. You can see the sun rising, right? Like, look at the water. Look at the water effects in this. Somebody watching a sunrise with me and I'm totally okay with it. Like, check this shit out, though. You're kind of getting in the way of the image, but thank you, though. Thank you for stopping by. But again, like, seriously big ups to the way that they made these clouds look. The fact that they are, in essence, 2D textures, but they are done in such a way that they actually... Like, I mean, this is how clouds look when there's a sun rising. And yes, I have watched sunrises before where the clouds are a completely different color than the sky. They turn almost like pink or they turn like almost a... Uh, like a red or a golden color or something like that. My God, look at that water. I mean, I know it's not real water, but that looks really realistic. Hang on, I'm gonna take turn my webcam off for a sec. I want y'all to appreciate this. Tell me you wouldn't want to re retire to a place like this or go on vacation to a place like this and see this kind of visual in front of you. Like, there's the sun. Yep. I may have actually missed the actual sunrise sunrise, but look at that. I kind of don't want to move, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm, I'm enjoying this too much. This is the only way I can ever look at the sun without, you know, going fucking blind. So, you know, I'll take it. Water loses its luster a little bit when you look to it a little closer. You can see all, like, the pixelation and artifacting and stuff like that. But still, like, look at this. This is so goddamn immersive, it's crazy. Okay. Fairy Skipper. Yes, off to the wolves' den we go. Uh, no. I don't want to test my skill in PvP. Because apparently I am now have all the skills of a level 80. Okay. I don't know what the- what is the arrow? What is the arrow? Where is my mouse? Where is my mouse? What is the arrow? What does the arrow mean? What the fuck is this? And as far as a PvP area goes, this is pretty cool. Sure does a hell of a lot better than fucking Ashran ever did. She says, having never actually played Ashram, because <laughs> lol, fuck that. Do I go down here? I go down here. Sup, buddy?
Oh, this is some interesting music. Oh. Boop. I like to do with the um the lightning haircut. Or basically like he stuck his finger in a light socket. Oh, so it's literally just like a 5v5 deathmatch. It's 5v5 arena then. I don't recall seeing your ugly mug around here before. Hmm, you say that Riki sent you. She said she was sent an adventure, not some Simpron Sea Louse. Bah! If I'd known it was your sorry hide to be dealing with, I'd have spit on your recommendation papers and tossed them in the briny deep. But, much to my chagrin, you made it here in one piece. Yeah, I kind of watch the sunrise, you know, as you do. They call this place the Wolf's Den, but you're no wolf. No, you're the runt of the litter. A whimpering, dueling pup. A whimpering, drooling pup would be lucky to suckle one drop of her mum's teeth before your bigger siblings grabbed her by the neck and tossed your side to starve like the wretch you are. Stand up straight and maggot, this ain't no place for the faint of heart, and I give your sorry ass until midday before you run home with your tail between your legs, crying for your mom. Damn. <coughs> You're beyond help, but because I'm feeling so goddamn generous, I'll give it to you anyway. You mind to learn something, come back and I'll beat it into you good and proper, and next time you show your ugly mug, I want to see fangs. Okie dokie, then. Yep. That sounds like a PvP, all right. Mentalist, mentalist, you know, mental asylum escapee. Yeah, you know that sounds that sounds pretty legit. That sounds exactly how I would expect the PvP to sound. Okay. So I think I'm gonna call it for here. Um, I know it's only been like an hour and a half. It hasn't been that long of a stream, but it's literally one o'clock in the morning where I am, and I have to work tomorrow. So thank you all for stopping by. I appreciate it, and peace out. Boop. I said 